guys, this is Ashley back with another video. Before we get into the video, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. So it seems as though Megan Thee Stallion's hairstylist um, might have been throwing shade at Nicki Minaj, okay? Um, fans saw him tweet, um, that's it, when the song had dropped with Coyle Ray. And then, you know, fans were in his mentions asking him what he's talking about. Uh, because, you know, Nicki Minaj's verse was fire. Remember, Nicki Minaj said she had the verse of the year. And so a lot of people were speculating that he was shading Nicki Minaj. He comes out and said that the fans were being weird and that he was not shading Nicki at all. Now, do I believe that Megan probably talks about Nicki behind the scenes? Absolutely. I feel like... Megan and her friends definitely be talking shit about Nicki Minaj behind the scenes, okay? Um, especially since, you know, she's not really cool with Normani right now. And I'm talking about Nicki. So with that being said, I'm not really shocked that he could be potentially throwing shade at Nicki Minaj. But there's really not enough context and I think that people were just watching to see how a lot of Nicki's ops would respond to the record, okay? But they're all tuned in. Megan can learn a lot from Nicki Minaj, especially when it comes to distinctively changing her flow and also changing up the topics, okay? Because, you know, Megan only talks about her JJ in every record, okay? She can't talk about nothing else, okay? She don't even be talking about party. I mean, that nigga probably is not even a thought in her mind. Moving on to Normani, she is being accused of copying Chloe and Holly, um, one of their songs on Ungodly Hour. Okay, so take a listen. So, you know, a lot of fans on Twitter are basically trying to say Normani copied Chloe and Holly's. Um, intro for one of their songs that they have on Ungodly Hour. To me, it really don't sound the same, but you know, the Chloe Bailey stands are going to reach, okay? Because, you know, Chloe has to suck on lollipops to get attention, okay? Other than that, nobody's really checking for Chloe. She has to, you know, suck on lollipops, twerk, bust it open, or pop out with Gunna in his tight pants for her to get any type of attention, especially on the blogs. That's why the Chloe Bailey stands are really upset, okay? It sounds like a reach to me, okay? Um, I really don't understand why they're so in tune to see what Normani got going on, especially if they don't like her and if they're calling her Bormani, okay? I mean, Walmart Yance, yes, she may not be boring, but she definitely does the antics, okay? And if she wasn't showing her body 98% of the time, nobody would be checking for Chloe, okay? Um, and I don't care what nobody says because y'all don't even support Chloe and Holly, okay? All their albums have been flops. Let's talk about it. Let's really talk about it. No shade, but all of Chloe and Holly's songs and albums have been flops. Did Ungali Albert even go platinum yet? Like, let's talk about it. At least Normani is a platinum selling artist. Okay? So you guys can say she's inconsistent, but even with Chloe being consistent, she still really don't got the sales. Okay? Even with all the antics. Moving on from that, Ari Lennox um, asked who she should do a freaky song with, okay? And a few artists replied. Um, T-Pain replied, Tank replied, and so did Chloe Bailey, okay? Because one fan suggested that she should do a record with Chloe Bailey. I think if she really wants to do an R&B freak song, her best option would be Tank, from all the people that replied. Um, T-Pain, I mean, no shade of T-Pain, but he's not really known for his vocals, even though he can sing. Um, and I feel like Chloe, I know she's going to really try to outdo Ari Lennox. It's going to be more of a competition for her. So I feel like her best option would be going with Tank, because Tank can sing. 
And he's known for putting out those freaky type of songs. Um, I know Chloe wants to pretend like she's for girl power, but I really don't believe she is. Okay. If she was really for women empowerment, she wouldn't have released a snippet the same day as Normani. Okay. And you know, she coming with that treat me song. Okay. No shade of Chloe, but you really got to keep your eye out on her. Like, she's a person that could be very sneaky. Um, and I feel like if her and Ari Lennox do a music video, she's just going to try to outdo Ari Lennox. You know, she's going to be twirling on the ground, licking the floor, you know, being very obnoxious. While Ari Lennox is just dancing, you know, regularly. Um, so... I mean, if she wants, she could do the collaboration with Chloe. I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, moving on to Megan Thee Stallion. So Megan's PR team allegedly gave um, the Shave Room an exclusive. And basically, um, they are saying that Megan's Savage X Fenty deal um, expired over a year ago. Okay? Which is all fine and dandy. Things do expire. Um, but my whole thing is... What does that have to do with Rihanna unfollowing you? I mean, that doesn't really correlate to anything. I know people are going to try to correlate it, but Rihanna follows a bunch of people that don't have Savage X Fenty deals. Why the fuck does she unfollow you, Megan? And also, why would they even allow the contract to expire if you're the it girl? That doesn't make any sense. You're the it girl in Rock Nation. You say you're the it girl in rap. Wouldn't Rihanna want the it girl promoting her brand? That's very interesting how she would let that expire. Maybe Megan wanted more money. You never know. But my whole thing is that doesn't really correlate with Rihanna unfollowing you because at the end of the day, she follows Nikki. Nikki don't got a savage deal. She follow um, Cardi. Cardi never had a savage deal. So it just doesn't make any sense. Megan's PR team is scrambling, okay? Because they're trying to paint a certain narrative of Megan Thee Stallion. But in all counts, she kind of just looks more guilty, in my opinion. Because I just feel like if you're not going to really address what's really going on, don't try to throw out little um, exclusives that really don't mean anything. I honestly think that Megan and Tori are both guilty, okay? I don't really think either one is innocent, but I feel like Megan is not being completely truthful about a lot of things, and I don't want Megan to get exposed, okay? Um, but if I was Megan, if she did not tell the complete truth, just come out now, okay? Don't be like Jesse Smollett. Because now his career is completely over. So just come out now and say, listen, you know, I made a mistake. Um, please forgive me. And I'm sure Megan will still have fans left. Um, not a lot because there's barely any now. You know, if we're talking about people supporting her. But she'll have some left. Moving on to Lotto. She does an interview with Big Boy. And basically, she is promoting her album, you know, 777, and she discusses that she was having trouble clearing her verse because she did not answer a certain artist's DM. Now, to me, that kind of sounds like Kodak Black. I feel like Kodak Black, he moves funny, okay? And he did several interviews basically saying that if a female artist wants a feature, he needs to bust. He said that about Dream Doll. And the City Girls, okay? Um, and I feel like that's why people need to stop collaborating with Kodak Black, if it is him. Um, because for him to even say that was completely inappropriate. Now, it could be somebody else, but it does sound like Kodak Black to me. I mean, he's always been a scumbag. So let me know who you guys think it is. Um, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel and have an amazing day.